Hi, I'm Claudia Brown Coulter with Pivotal Peace. I'm your go-to mediator for navigating divorce while parenting children with special needs. I'm also an LDA, legal document assistant, based in the greater Los Angeles area. Today, we're talking about mediation strategies when you have children with special needs, because you already know you need something different. So really, the importance of this is focusing on creating something tailored and custom for your family and focusing on the best needs of your children. And that's really hard at this stage in life because life as you know it is changing. Sometimes all you can do is focus on yourself and there's nothing wrong with that because grief can be so all encompassing and all consuming. But as you create this parenting plan, this is going to dictate how the next several years of your life go so you really do have to put your emotions to the side and think about what is best for your child. I'm not telling you that's going to be easy and I'm not telling you you have to focus on that at all times, but when it's time to work on this, you've got to shut everything else off and just focus on this. So let's get into it. So some strategies that you want to consider. You want to kind of look at the whole child, do an assessment, and I don't mean like, and I, you know, an educational evaluation. That's not what I mean. Look at your child. What are all of the things that your child needs? What services are they accessing right now? What physical, emotional needs do they have right now? Maybe even spiritual needs. What needs do they have right now? Whether or not they're addressed, doesn't matter. What needs do you see? And Take a look at any correspondence with doctors or schools or outside professionals. Look at the IEP, uh, the plan. Go ahead and look at all of that information so you can really know what does my child need. It's very likely that one parent knows more than the other parent, but they're still a parent. And if that child is going back and forth, that parent needs to have access to the information. Yes, I hear you. They should already know. They have joint access. It is their job to get that information. Yes, but is that in the best interest of your child? If you know that your soon-to-be ex is not going to go and get the information that they need for their your child to parent them appropriately and to meet their needs, then at the outset, you need to provide that information. It doesn't have to happen and, and you don't have to do that forever. But at the outset, as you're creating a parenting plan, I would suggest you kind of lay it all out on paper. Create a spreadsheet or something so you can all see. It's not nebulous. It's very concrete. Do it one time. This is not about your spouse. You are not doing this to help them. You are doing this to help your child. Once you have that laid out, look at the key areas, the key issues. What are the things that your child needs the most that are going to move the needle? I took a long pause there. I remember as I was going through a divorce and my child was young, I remember hearing a therapist or someone say, you know, a bedtime, the time they go to bed isn't really going to matter years from now. And of course, I'm like, yes, it is. But there are some things that that's just not worth dying for. I'm not going to die on the hill of bedtime and neither should you. There are things that are going to be out of your control. And those are the things that happen in other parents' house. So what are the most essential things that need to happen? Absolutely good nutrition, a bedtime is important, but you don't have as much control over that. Is it making sure that they are at school on time? Is it making sure that they get to their appointments? Is it making sure that their needs are met and that the other parent is facilitating that and communicating with people? Those are the things that are gonna move the needle and help your child have success. So focus on those things. Those are the key issues. Those are the things that you can have a little bit more say and a little bit more control over. It's hard. This is one of the hardest things about divorce. It's not just that your child is gone, it's that you've lost control over them while they are gone. You've lost control over the fact of who they see. You can't control that. Where they go, 
what time they go to bed or what they eat. You just can't. You just can't. Don't throw darts at me, but I'm going to tell you like it is. You need to know that now. Okay, I'm going to get off of that. But it doesn't mean you can't express that. So focus on, as you're looking at the parenting plan and, and you're trying to mediate, focus on those key issues, those key things that your child needs to be successful. And those other things like bedtime, like good nutrition, you know, like consistent, stable routine, depending on your child, that actually might be a key issue. Bring those up too in mediation. Express your needs, express your concerns. See if you can make that information and spin it in a way so that it benefits your spouse. Because sometimes people misinterpret, you're going through a divorce, right? Your soon to be ex will misinterpret your care for your child as you try to control them. You're still trying to control me. And you're like, I don't really care about you anymore. This is about my child. If you spin it in, man, you know, the better sleep he gets, the less fits he throws. The less sugar she eats, the more calm she is. She's more able to do her homework. And, um, you know, the house is more peaceful. Have you noticed that yet? Tr whatever you can do to kind of spin that information so it's an advantageous to them, great. This is not about you controlling them. Remember, you don't have control. It's about what's best for your child. At the end of the day, you don't have to control over that. I also recognize, though, that that child is going to come home to you as there might be a mess. They might be a mess because they become dysregulated at the other parent's house. So it's going to be even more important for you to create routines. But as you are mediating, the more open and honest you can be in your communication with, with them about your concerns for your child, about how they can best function in the world, the better. And that goes to my next point of having a child-centered approach. Really focus all of your comments, all of your ideas, all of your suggestions on your child. Is your child's name Melody? Melody needs this, 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 and this. This isn't about my dreams and my futures and my hopes for Melody. This is about what Melody needs to flourish. Focus simply on her. People, especially it depends on how this divorce, how this divorce has taken place, like what caused the end of the marriage. People will surprise you in mediation. They can be really cruel when it comes to their children because they feel like they're hurting you or they feel like you are holding on too tightly. Oh, well, they're just going to have to get used to it. So this is really where you're going to have to use your, um, your ability to kind of spin information and to have someone think it's their idea. Your ability to take that information and help them see how it will benefit them. And then it's gonna have you, you're gonna to have to have a little bit of a thick skin so that if they make attacks, if they throw barbs, well, this is just about you and you don't have control and oh, well, they don't act like that with me and you're like, that's so BS. You're just gonna to have to have some thick skin and just go through it anyway, keep going. They're going to see the truth. Whether they admit to you or not, they're going, to, they're going to see it and they're going to know. And that goes to the last point of really trying to be flexible. Demonstrate flexibility. Incorporate some flexibility. Sometimes in divorce, there, a lot of times in divorce, there's a lot of posturing. Oh, I am a good parent. I am the better parent. Let them posture. But paint a way out for them. You know, like if you back someone into a corner, what are they going to do? They're going to fight their way out. But if you, if someone is backed into a corner, what you should do is paint a way out for them. They don't have to take it, but give them a way out. Like, yeah, no, this is great. Yeah. And if, you know, you're ever, I mean, I know it's not too much for you. And I know that child is not going to miss me when they're gone with you. But if, if something comes up, you know, if, if work or whatever, if something comes up and, and work is too much or. You've got to go out of town or something like that. Just give me a call. You want to incorporate some flexibility. Now, I know some people who are like, nope, you fought for that parenting time. I am not taking them back early. It is not my time. Okay, that's a personal choice. Um, but if somebody is fighting you tooth and nail to prove that they're a good parent, 
um, and you know that their past record is one of not really being there, you need to expect that that's not really going to change. It might look like it's changing, but it's not changing. So if you give them opportunities to return the child to you, uh, to ask for help and know that you're not going to be judgmental or um, condescending to them, they're eventually going to take you up on that. Okay, so encourage flexibility, be flexible, and expect that things might change as time goes on. This probably isn't what you want to hear. It's not necessarily cut and dry. These are children. These are these are people. Nothing is, it's, it's not a robot. It's not a machine. You're not going to put a plan in place and it's going to work perfectly from day one and there's never going to be any deviations. There will be deviations. So expect them and, and just function with grace. And to the point of maybe they want to drop the kids off early. Now, if you're not available, you are not available. You, you have no obligation to stop what you're doing and come back. Uh, but if you are available, then be honest about that. Okay, my two cents. So how do you navigate these conversations? Two, two main things. Um, your, your, your goal is to have successful children. Even if the other parent is acting like um, they're God's gift to parenting, and you know that that's not true, um, or as if they don't really care and it's like, they're fine. Their kids are going to be resilient. It doesn't matter what we do. Deep down, they're scared. They're being defensive. They probably are not really sure what to do. They've dug this hole. They can't get out of it. Offer them grace, right? Like at the end of the day, you need to have that mindset that goes at the end of the day. They really do love this child. Maybe I don't necessarily agree with all the expressions of love, but I really believe the heart of the matter is to say, want our child to succeed. So focus on that. And then manage your emotions in this process. One of the ways to manage your emotions is just to take a time out. Can I speak to the mediator by myself? Or I need a minute. I Give me a second. And just go off camera. Ask to be put in the waiting room or ask to speak to the mediator so your spouse can go to the waiting room. Take a break. Take a pause. It can really help recenter and recalibrate you. You're building goodwill. You're making really good progress. You don't want to mess it up uh, by blurting something out or sighing or interrupting or rolling your eyes or doing this or that. And it can throw things apart. It can set you back several steps. So take a break and manage those emotions. Use the mediator to help buffer between you. Use me to take a break from mediation. Oh, I need to speak to the mediator by myself, please. And just unload. Tell them exactly how you're feeling. It's really going to help. Okay. And then when your spouse comes back in, put that poker face back on. You keep going. You know, there are some people who do that really, really well. They have this poker face. And then we get in private session. I'm like, oh, oh, you're a totally different person. Uh, but they are ready. They have their game face on. And game face doesn't need to be mean or rude. This isn't um, the Super Bowl. Uh, there's no trophy at the end that, tr that only one of you gets. The, the reward, the prize are, are kids that thrive. Kids that are at their, living at their fullest potential. And that's something you can both participate in sharing. So when you are creating this plan, you want to make sure it's functional. And that so you want to balance responsibilities. Balance those responsibilities. If they're posturing, I can do this. Great. You do this. I'll do that. Balance those responsibilities. You no longer have to do everything. They want 50-50 custody. You're agreeing to 50-50 custody. It doesn't just mean where the child sleeps. Yeah, you got them on Thursdays. Every Thursday, they got to go to downtown LA for this therapy appointment. Okay, let me know how it goes. It's kind of gangster. Uh, it's it's going to take you a while to kind of like go hands off. Give them that responsibility. People will surprise you. This person who maybe wasn't very involved before, they will change as a parent. Or they'll revert and start giving the kid back to you more and more and more. Most people change. 
most people step up and become a better parent divorced than they were married because they have no choice but to accept that responsibility. They can't put it on you anymore. Make sure that there's detail in your parenting plan. You cannot control everything. There are unforeseen circumstances, but the more detailed you can be about it, detailed. Um, And it might not be so detailed where my child is going to this therapist at this time on this day at this address, right? Things change. But if there are appointments on these days, uh, the custodial parent, whoever's the custodial parent on that day needs to take them. That's detailed. That's detailed enough. So you want to make sure there's some sort of detail arrangement. Uh, the court is not going to go to your house and your spout, your, your soon to be ex's house and enforce bedtime. But you can put it in there if that's something you guys agree to. It might not be court enforceable, but to have it there in black and white and to document that you guys have agreed to that will go a long way. Um, When you get somebody to verbally agree to something, something comes out of their mouth, they're more likely to stick with that. So if they agree to that, write it down. Why not? Why not include something like that there? Um, As much as you can plan for the future. Look to the future. Think about what their needs might be. What 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 type of needs will they have? Um, are they on an IEP? Are they going to college? If you think that your child is going to college, would it be better to try to transition them to a 504 towards the end of high school so that they can continue to receive certain services in college? Think, begin to think about those things and have conversations. Think about future medical needs, depending on the disability of your child, what their needs are. Think about future costs. And that could be, um, maybe they need additional medical devices. Um, You wanna be thinking that, make sure that there's continued medical insurance. So really think about these future needs. Will this child still need child support because they will not be able to be an independent adult? They will never be able to live on their own? Will we need an estate plan? Do we need a special needs trust so that when we're both gone from this earth, there's provisions for our child? These are the things you need to start projecting into the future. You're not going to know the answers to these questions, but if you talk to your professionals, if you talk to the people in the IEP team, they can help point you in the right direction. Talk to the therapist, talk to the doctor. They can help tell you, well, I've had other clients, I've had other patients that this is what has happened in the future. So then you can manage your expectations around what your child will and won't be able to do and bring that up in in the mediation. And even if the other person doesn't want to talk about it, and even if it doesn't come to any sort of agreement about that, you've brought it out there. This is not something that's sitting inside of you. You've brought this issue to the forefront. It can't be put back in now. Lastly, you're going to need to review this parenting plan. It doesn't mean you need to litigate It doesn't mean you need to go back to court. You guys might just need to go back to a mediator and draw up a private contract of how are we going to now change this parenting plan now that our child is 16 and their needs have changed. How are we going to change this based on their needs and be willing to readjust? Like, I understand. You're like, I'm, wait, you're, you're, you're telling me that I've spent all of this time in mediation. I've spent all of this time getting divorced from this person. And now we might have to adjust. We might have to remediate. Maybe. But if you have a good working relationship, you might not have to mediate. It could just be a conversation at pick up and drop off. Oh, yeah, this is happening. This is changing. Oh, yeah, cool. No, we got this. Let's let's do this, this, and this. It could be as simple as that. And that is the goal. That as you walk through life now, no longer spouses, but as co-parents, You guys see different sides of your children. And if you are in that posture of adjustment and reviewing what's working and how your child is doing and what's not working, then you can easily pivot and change. So if you need help creating a parenting plan, 
I am here to help you. I'm here to have conversation with you to really help you create something unique and customized for your child. It is not impossible. It will not take forever. This is something you can do and it's something you need to do. Do not leave this up to the courts to decide what is best for your child. You guys know what's best for your child. All right. Thank you for joining me today. I can't wait to see you again. Have a great one.